Before you listen, if you enjoy the stories and want to hear more, then please consider subscribing. Most of you listening aren't subscribed, so please take this time to subscribe. Turn on notifications so you'll never miss a story and be the first to hear. You'll also be supporting me. Thank you. As a business traveler, I have been to my fair share of hotels. From luxurious five-star resorts to dingy roadside motels, I stayed in them all. But nothing could have prepared me for the nightmare that awaited me at the New Orleans Hotel. I had been in New Orleans for a week-long conference and was looking forward to finally getting some rest. When I arrived at the hotel, I was greeted by a grand lobby with chandeliers hanging from the ceiling and the aroma of freshly brewed coffee from the nearby cafe. The check-in process was smooth and I was assigned a room on the sixth floor. As I made my way to the elevator, I noticed that there was no sixth floor button. I approached the front desk to ask about it, and the receptionist gave me a strange look before explaining that the hotel had a tradition of skipping the sixth floor he was superstition surrounding the number 666. I tried to laugh it off, but the feeling of unease lingered. As I entered my room, I was struck by how opulent it was. The king-size bed was adorned with plush pillows, and the room had a stunning view of the city. But as the night wore on, things began to take a turn for the worse. I started having nightmares. They were vivid and terrifying dreams that had left me drenched in sweat. I would wake up to find myself gasping for air, my heart racing. It felt like something was watching me, something sinister and malevolent. At first, I tried to dismiss it as jet lag and exhaustion catching up with me. But as the days went on, the nightmares only grew worse. I began to notice strange occurrences. Objects moving on their own, whispers in the dead of night, and the overwhelming feeling of being watched. I tried to rationalize these occurrences, thinking they were just tricks of the mind. But as the days went by, I knew that something was wrong with that room. One night, I decided to investigate. I took out my phone and started recording my surroundings, hoping to catch anything that could explain what was happening. I set the phone down and went to bed. The next morning, I woke up and played back the recording. To my horror, I heard whispers and groans, and I could see my belongings moving on their own. I couldn't believe what I was seeing and hearing. Desperate for answers, I approached the hotel staff and asked if anyone else had ever reported strange occurrences in the room. They seemed hesitant to discuss it at first, but eventually one of them told me a chilling story about a vengeful spirit that was said to haunt the room. According to the staff member, the hotel had been built on a site that was once a cemetery, and the spirit of a woman who had been wronged by the hotel's previous owner was said to haunt that very room. The hotel management had tried to cover up the story, but rumors persisted among the staff. I was skeptical at first, but the more I learned about the story, the more convinced I became that something was truly amiss. After hearing the chilling story from the hotel staff about the vengeful spirit that haunted the room, I couldn't ignore the feeling of being watched. The nightmares continued and strange occurrences persisted, leaving me feeling on edge throughout my stay at the New Orleans Hotel. I approached the hotel staff once again, this time asking for a different room. They were fully booked, and the only option was to stay in the same room. The staff offered to move me to a different hotel, but I didn't want to lose out on the convenience of being in the same hotel as the conference I was attending. Again, I was desperate for a solution. I decided to do some research on my own. I spent hours scoring the internet for any information about the hotel and the room, hoping to find some explanation for the strange occurrences. After hours of searching, I stumbled upon an article from a local newspaper that detailed the history of the hotel. According to the article, the hotel was built on a site that was once a cemetery. The cemetery was moved to a different location, but it was rumored that not all the graves were relocated. The hotel was built over these unmarked graves, and it was said that the spirits of those buried there still lingered. As I read the article, everything began to fall into place the nightmares, the strange occurrences, the feeling of being watched, it all made sense. I was staying in a room built on top of unmarked graves, and the spirits were restless. I left that night and fell asleep in the cafe across the road. It was supposed to be a relaxing vacation in the mountains, a chance for our group of tourists to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city and enjoy the natural beauty of the surroundings but we were in for a rude awakening when we checked into the old hotel that seemed to have been frozen in time. The hotel's facade was gloomy and foreboding, and the interior was dark and musty. 
The receptionist seemed to be in a hurry to get rid of us, and there was an unspoken sense of unease that permeated the air. But we were too exhausted from the long drive to pay much attention, and we just wanted to check into our rooms and get some rest. The rooms themselves were nothing out of the ordinary, just your typical run-of-the-mill accommodations. But it wasn't long before we realized that something was amiss. It started with the whispers that we heard in the dead of night, the sound of footsteps that echoed through the halls, and the flickering of the lights. We tried to brush it off as our imagination playing tricks on us, but as the nights wore on, the disturbances became more pronounced. Doors would slam shut on our own, and we would hear the sound of furniture being moved around in the empty rooms next to us. There was a sense of dread that permeated every inch of the hotel, and we all felt like we were being watched. It wasn't long before we started experiencing terrifying visions that would jolt us awake in the middle of the night. We saw shadows that seemed to dance in the darkness, and we heard screams that were not our own. It was as if the hotel was alive and was trying to communicate with us in its own twisted way, but the most terrifying experience was yet to come. One night, I woke up to find that my room was shaking violently, as if there was an earthquake. But as I sat up in bed, I realized that the walls themselves were moving. They were alive, pulsing, and throbbing like a living organism. The horror of that moment is something that I will never forget. I tried to leave the room, but the door wouldn't budge. I was trapped, surrounded by living walls that seemed to be closing in on me. I felt like I was suffocating, and I could feel the hotel's evil presence all around me. It wasn't until morning that the walls stopped moving that I was able to leave the room. But the experience had left me shaken to my core. I knew that we had to leave the hotel as soon as possible, but that was easier said than done. The hotel had become a labyrinth, and the corridors seemed to shift and change at will. We found ourselves going in circles, trapped in a never-ending maze. And as the days wore on, we began to lose our grip on reality. We saw things that weren't there, heard voices that whispered in our ears, and felt the hotel's cold, clammy embrace. One of my friends claimed that they had been attacked by an unseen force, and another said that they had seen a figure lurking in the shadows. We knew that something was seriously wrong with the hotel, and we began to fear for our lives. We began to square the hotel for any clues as to what was going on. We found old newspaper clippings that told of a dark history. The hotel had been built on the site of a grisly murder, and the spirits of the victims were said to still haunt the place. After a while, we decided to just leave and sleep in our cars. The next morning, we spit away from that hotel and never went back to that place. I remember this day like it was yesterday. It was a sunny day in Paris, and my family and I were excited to be spending our vacation in this beautiful city. We had chosen a hotel that was centrally located and had good reviews, but as soon as we stepped into the lobby, we noticed that it looked a bit run down. However, we didn't pay much attention to it at first. We were just excited to explore the city and make the most of our time there. We checked into our room, which was on the second floor. It was a decent room, nothing too fancy, but it was clean and had a good view of the city. We settled in, unpacked our bags, and started planning our itinerary for the next few days. As the day turned into night, we noticed that the hotel was surprisingly quiet. We could hear the occasional footsteps of other guests in the hallway, but it wasn't too bothersome. We assumed that everyone was just tired from traveling or out exploring the city. However, that night, we were all awakened by a loud banging sound. It seemed to come from the floor above us. At first, we tried to ignore it, thinking it was just construction work or someone moving furniture. But the banging continued for hours and we couldn't get any sleep. It was frustrating and unsettling. The next morning, we asked the receptionist about the noise. She looked at us with a blank expression and said that there was no construction work going on in the hotel. We were confused, but we decided to let it go. The second night was worse. The banging sound was louder and more intense. We couldn't sleep at all. The noise continued for hours until it finally stopped at around 4 a.m. The next day, we went to the reception to complain. We demanded to know what was happening on the locked floor above us. The receptionist just gave us a weird look and said that the floor was empty and had been locked for years. We were shocked. As the days passed, the banging sound continued every night and it became more frequent and intense. We tried to complain to the staff, but they all acted like they didn't know what we were talking about. We even tried to investigate the locked floor ourselves, but the stairwell leading up to it was always locked, and we never saw anyone going in or out of it. The third night was the worst. We heard not just banging, but also strange scratching sounds, like something was trying to claw its way out. 
We tried to ignore it, but it was impossible. We were terrified. We decided to check out the next morning, but something strange happened. When we tried to leave our room, we found the door wouldn't budge. We tried everything, but it was like the door was sealed shut. We started to panic. We called the receptionist for help, but there was no answer. It was like the whole hotel had gone silent. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, we heard a faint knocking on our door. We opened it, and the receptionist was standing there, looking pale and scared. She whispered to us that we had to leave the hotel immediately and never come back. We were confused and scared, but we didn't argue. We grabbed our bags and ran out of the hotel. As we looked back, we saw the receptionist locking the door behind us, and we noticed that the locked floor was now open, with an eerie light coming from inside. We never found out what was on that floor, and we never went back to that hotel. But I still have nightmares about the banging and scratching sounds, and the feeling of being trapped in that room. I can't help but wonder what was really happening in that hotel, and what was really happening above our room. Thanks for listening in. If you like these stories and want to hear more, then please subscribe and like and support this new channel. We have more stories for you to listen to.